get started. I'm glad that so many of you have been able to join us. My name is Chris Thurber. I am the co-founder of Expert Online Training. Expert Online Training is a website that is a learning management system, which you can think about like a classroom, that hosts a, several libraries of wonderful content for youth leaders. So my co-founder, Evan Helte, and I began Expert Online Training a dozen years ago, understanding that no owner or director of a summer youth program or summer school or school or camp had enough time with their faculty or staff on site to be able to cover all of the things that they really wanted to or needed to for accreditation purposes. So rather than sit with the anxiety that you have unleashed an undertrained staff with your clients or your clients' children, we designed expert online training. So staff can participate in a course that either we've designed or you've designed that covers behavior management, leadership, youth development and play, supervision, mental health, and give them uh, some training at the beginning, intermediate, or advanced level that they can do from their mobile device. Uh, we now have uh, the capacity uh, or will in, a, in another couple weeks that uh, learners can use our app. But the point is to be able to adopt a mindset of professionalism and learn a lot of good content before your staff or faculty arrive on site for your custom in-depth training on key topics. And you can begin the summer or whatever your season is with a great deal of confidence that your staff have the training that they need to deal with the big challenges that kids are gonna put forward. So that's Expert Online Training, and I invite you to visit expertonlinetraining.com to learn more. Now, one of the most exciting things about Expert Online Training this year is that we are welcoming Mike Schlaff and his library of awesome video content related to his program called Maple Woodshop. So we do have some program specific videos in the Expert Online Training library called Leadership Essentials. Uh, your staff can learn about archery, they can learn about swimming, they can learn about um, we have some woodworking modules there, but Mike is an expert and if you tuned in before uh, 11 o'clock, you heard him talk some about his camp background and his carpentry background, but we're really excited because Mike has not just awesome videos, but he also has awesome equipment, some of which he's designed. So this webinar is going to be awesome for people who have a woodworking program or an arts and crafts program, but they want to take it to the next level, or for schools and summer youth programs that don't have a woodworking or arts and crafts program, or even a you know, maker space that allows for you know, creativity of different sorts. So let me turn things over to Mike Schlaff and ask him to say more about what he does, what Maple Woodshop is, and then together we're gonna to answer your questions. We're going to guide you through uh, a flyover of what Maple Woodshop does. We'll give you a glimpse at some of his videos and um, we'll, I hope, get you really inspired to create a fantastic woodworking program at your school, camp or youth program. Take it away, Mike. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Expert Online Training. So excited to work with you. And welcome, everyone. So excited that you're, you're here with us today. So uh, Maple Woodshop is a program that um, empowers kids, and it does it through having them do projects with hand tools, only hand tools, no power tools. And they do some classic woodworking projects, and it also can be adapted and used in a number of different ways uh, for kids with special needs, for arts education, for math education, for science education. It's, you know, you can call it STEAM. I heard a term this week called uh, slow tech, which I kind of like. Okay. <laughs> and um, and uh, so it's very, you know, powerful for the kids. You, you as camp people uh, or educators or community people, you know this. Um, that kids, a lot of kids learn very well with their hands, tactile learners, visual learners. And so this program is really for that kind of kid, but it's for every kid. Um, in addition, uh, we, it's engaging. 
you know, our biggest problem, and from what we hear back from our 16 camps and schools and libraries, is that uh, we have to set timers so we know when to start cleanup because, you know, everyone's just lost in the moment. And the last thing we say is that it, we make it, it, it easy. And I think over the next hour, you'll, I hope you'll start to see how we do that. One way, again, is that, you know, it's hand tools. So we take away a big safety concern. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we then teach a lot, we help you um, train your staff through the online videos, the quizzes, the handouts, in-person training, remote live training, full. Um, we have, by this coming summer, we'll have about 60 hours of programming. That you That's fantastic. Deliver yeah. in addition to any sort of independent projects you want to create. And, um, and then we provide all the hand tools. Mm -hmm. And further on that sort of infrastructure side, we provide these workstations that come in pairs and go on top of your existing tables. And then all those tools and work, the workbenches that go on your tables, they live inside a tool chest that we also provide. And so maybe Chris, uh, if there's a photo, I think I sent one today. Yes. With the toolbox open. And so what you have is this like art cart, if you will, but it's a wood shop cart. And so in the cart is kind of everything you need to, uh, with no technology, uh, run a program. Now, where expert online training comes in is that we appreciate that you have this, you know, there's this classic problem of you find your staff in the spring, they might be high school graduates, college students, and how do you and train them up as much as possible before they come to your camp. So, you know, that's why we, we partner with Expert Online Training to provide this ability. And then once they're on site, you know, we can either uh, do training in person or regional training as we're now offering this nationwide. And um, in addition, offer, you know, one-on-one -on -one consulting for programming, you know, how many kids, how many weeks, how long mm -hmm. are your sessions, et cetera. And we can help you choose a, a curriculum so that you can ramp up and get your staff uh, super engaged and uh, be able to offer this for kids. Just one last thing is now that we've been, you know, in 16 uh, different locations, we've seen some patterns. And one pattern that's really fascinating to me is that the uh, people who uh, we train are generally not woodworkers. So I'll say that again, They're, the people we train are usually not woodworkers. They're all very, very good with kids, but the woodworking is simply an incremental skill that we can help train on. Mm -hmm. and, and so what we found was that, you know, in one camp, there was an 18 year old just graduated high school and she did fine. Another camp, Asphalt Green, uh, there was a classroom teacher who really truly wasn't a woodworker, but she was a great classroom teacher and they ran over 200 kids through that program their first summer in one location. Uh, they have a second location where they ran, you know, they had a number of other kids. They basically made it part of the core program at mm -hmm. the camp year one. So just, so, you know, so people are um, understanding this. I'm speaking um, from my perspective, uh, not only as a fellow uh, woodworker, although without um, the carpentry background that you have, but I hope people are hearing three things. One, this is a vehicle for positive youth development, and it's particularly powerful because it integrates not just visual, but tactile and olfactory uh, cognitive dimensions of development. And it's, you know, I guess the second thing is you're, you have created in Maple Woodshop a turnkey solution with this cabinet that we can show again on screen and the curated collection of tools that you have and the video training modules that are posted on expert online training. Uh, and I guess the third thing, most important, you don't need to have been a carpenter or have uh, exquisite finished carpentry skills to make this work as a successful program. So um, it, there's really fantastic trio of strengths that you described. It's, thank you, it's nice in that regard. The other, you know, at, at another, you know, very high conceptual level is that I, I think it provides a lot of spirituality. And so, mm. you know, whether it's, a, you want to tie it to a particular religion, um, it's, that's very possible. 
Um, and if you don't, um, there's something about being uh, mindful and present that uh, it provides a very, very powerful experience. And, um, and the kids take it seriously. You know, they're very engaged. I see this, you know, uh, when I teach, you know, kids who have, you know, very severe impulse control issues are actually pretty safe because they have something to do yeah. at their own pace. And again, because it's hand tools, and again, because of safety, on the safety front, uh, we have five rules in Maplewood Shop. And the first rule is be patient. And the second rule is your hand is not a clamp. <laughs> so we teach about, you know, being present, yeah. and then some shop safety. And the last, the fifth rule is be gentle. And the feedback we got from one uh, director of uh, arts and crafts uh, what she said was that she liked how it made the program gender neutral. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't really appreciate that uh, early on, but I, I see it now that it's not about being macho or tough. It's about, you know, struggling and persevering. And that's what I find really empowering about it. Yeah. That everyone's going to face a challenge in their project, regardless of any, you know, physical or emotional, uh, you know, moniker they may have. And they, in their own way, will get through it. And yeah. you have that ability to do that. That's why, you know, I, I, it may sound a little highfalutin, but I, I really do see that uh, woodworking is sort of, I mean, there's other, other activities, by all means, that provide sure, yeah. presence and growth. Yeah. But uh, I think this is, I haven't really appreciated the depths to which uh, woodworking is one of those. Mm -hmm. I think it was because it was tied up with some other gunk mm. right, that you needed, that it required power tools. Right. It created this scary thing, that it was tied to trades, that it was often taught by men who were older. And, you know, it was actually gender restricted in, yeah. the, in the 1970s in terms of, so there's all these things that we took the best of what it had as potential. Yeah. And then we made it portable and we made it accessible, you know, for everyone. And so I'm dying to show this one picture. Um, let me just, uh, let me uh, close that picture. And um, I'd love for you to narrate this and a couple of the other pictures. Um, I guess what I'll say is uh, having, you know, listened to Mike give the 30,000 foot flyover of Maplewood Shop, the philosophical rationale, the benefits for positive youth development, uh, the complete lack of uh, prerequisites if you want to adopt this program. Um, I think all you really need is, you know, a vested interest in young people's growth and development, which um, clearly, um, <laughs> if you're tuned into this webinar, I think you have. Uh, would you tell us about this photo? Absolutely. Let's see. So what we see here, there's a, a few things to unpack. One is that girl, can't be older than six, um, yet she's handling this, you know, adult size saw. Now the saw, um, I do want to point out that she's not wearing glasses and uh, that's our bad, but we generally, uh, in fact, always make sure that kids have their uh, safety glasses on. That's okay, we'll, we'll give her some glasses. There. Right. Uh, the next thing is that she's pulling the saw and uh, there's these, they're called Ryoba saws. Uh, they're made in Japan. They're fantastic for kids because they use uh, back muscles and uh, which are stronger than your, you know, the front of your body. They uh, have two saws in one, so you can cut sideways and uh, lengthwise along the wood. They're light, they're thin, and they're much easier to get a straight cut on. So mm -hmm. it takes away a big frustration level. Beneath the saw and beneath the wood that she's cutting is a woodworking station. Uh, she's at one side, there's another station opposite her. The fact that they face each other creates a community aspect. Kids help each other. So this is what here, like this is what you would call a station. And so people aren't confused. I'll, I'll sort of draw in another uh, color here. This is, a, this is a second station here. That is correct. And the pair okay. of stations together creates a portable workbench. The workbench simply rests on the table, but it's got some clever things underneath that protect your table and provide an enormous amount of friction so they don't mm -hmm. slide around. And that's where we talk about your hand is not a clamp. Uh, most accidents happen because your hand 
is in front of a tool, right? De facto. So yeah. what we enabled was that you can have either both hands on the tool or that the wood is being held securely so you don't have to uh, worry about that or be distracted. Mm -hmm. Then the, um, let's see, uh, when she finishes sawing, the saw will drop down onto this uh, foot that's underneath and again, protect the table. So there's a whole lot of things where, you know- There's the start, foot. Exactly, even if you start young, um, we have ways that kids can uh, do like real woodworking. And that's another empowering aspect that they're using real tools, you know, right off the bat. Yeah. Um, then, um, gosh. Are there other pictures that you'd like me to show? Yeah, I think um, maybe you could show uh, some other shots from today. Which... Yeah, sure. Uh, let's do this. Um, That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to um, tell me which one you would like, the guitars or? Um... The guitars. Maybe uh, we'll, we'll have a shot of the kid working on the guitar. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I can find that. Um, I believe that... I think it's this one. Um, I think I think they're working on a guitar. Oh no, this is working on a cabinet. But I will oh, let's talk fun. about so, yeah this one, and then I will um, absolutely uh, find the one where they're working on the guitar. So uh, you know this is a better example where you can see, and this is actually at uh, one of our partner sites is the library here in Maplewood. And they were a very early partner, really wonderful. And what we uh, have done with them is to uh, use, treat it as a lab where it's free to enter and we try out new project ideas. So in this case, the kids are learning about proportions and creating their own uh, toolboxes. And each toolbox is kind of made to the golden ratios and proportions. So there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of math, but it was a lot of fun as well. So you can see how there's a, a black thing that I call a hold down that's holding literally holding the wood down mm -hmm. you can see that their left hand uh this is the child on the right the left hand is far away from the saw the other saw is pulling and you know they have various tools sitting on the table uh but there's no clutter you know we, right clutter is dangerous so we, we remove the clutter um but they're using you know pencils and combination squares to mark these things out yeah so good distance between uh, where your hand is and where the saw is there. Exactly. We say don't yeah. don't cross the red line. That's <laughs> good. The red line, literally. <laughs> and good. Uh, so, uh, if there's any other photos you want to show, I'll, I'll yeah, show let's see. Um, I'm gonna, I think, um, go forward with. Uh, um, let's. That might be the last one there. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go backwards. Um, this was the one I think you uh, wanted me to show. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'll uh, show this photo and then there was a, a question that came in. Great. So I'll answer that. So um, this again shows, now this is sitting on a, a middle school uh, science table in a classroom. So the program was designed originally for a school in Manhattan. And so it was meant to use school tables. And along the way, we realized that camps were a perfect you know, opportunity uh, for this. So uh, our, our vision, in fact, is that, you know, anywhere there's a 10-year-old, there's woodworking, <laughs> you know? And, you know, you can go up and down several years. This program is really yeah. for like third to eighth grade. Um, but that's- and this isn't like a special table right here. I'm just gonna right. mark, this, this is like a standard table. It's folding table of some sort, okay. The, the woodworking, uh, the tabletop, uh, workbenches go from uh, anywhere from 30 inches, a table 30 inches to 48 inches wide, even right. Wide. So this guy here, uh, if people haven't figured it out yet, um, is an expanding uh, track that can accommodate widths um, in the dimensions you just described. Yeah, so for any of your tables. And then, you know, regarding the projects, we have this philosophy of crawl, walk, run, where we're going to start you off in terms of your programming progression, start off very simple minded string art, so, which is great to learn how to use a hammer. Uh, jigsaw puzzle, which is great to learn how to use a coping saw. Uh, Jenga blocks, which is great to learn how to use those uh, Japanese Ryoba saws. Mm -hmm. Then we start taking projects and, and 
you know, building on those skills and competencies and start adding in layers of uh, like order of operations. And along the way, kids um, get to really start expressing their individuality. And so we have art teachers using this to express identity, you know, and, and what does a box mean to you? Mm -hmm. So even if it's the same project, there's a lot of room for creative expression. So one yeah. we were seeing there was a the guitar. And every kid, we had over 100 kids make guitars this last year. That's so awesome. With a, a plank and ended up with a guitar. And that's... So I have to show um, how excited the kids were to uh, yeah. Yeah. get this get this done um, while you continue to narrate. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, exactly. And so every guitar was different. Yeah. And even if it's the same order of operations, every guitar was different. And mm -hmm. so that's how we, we do this progression. Now, uh, some kids struggled and some kids, uh, you know, did not. So in terms of, there was a question about uh, how does this adapt, you know, for kids with special needs? And the, um, the answer is that uh, one of our locations is a special needs school. It's a K through six school in New Jersey. And they, the teachers told me that they didn't really adapt the programs very much. Hmm. Um, it totally depends. Special needs is such a broad category. Yeah, yeah. I think if uh, I've seen with uh, like, uh, what was it called? Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD. Yeah. Uh, ASD, uh, ADHD, uh, dyslexia, impulse control. For those sorts of special needs, I've, I've found that there's very few modifications required. Mm -hmm. Uh, largely because the ratio uh, is, is much lower of student to teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's kids with, say, cerebral palsy or, or low vision, I'm, with low vision, it's interesting. You can do a lot through feel. In fact. Mm -hmm. um, I can, I can uh, no pun intended, I can, I can see that working. Mm -hmm. And then, when, but when it comes to, like, kind of musculoskeletal, issues i have to admit i don't know um, okay yeah or you know um or cognitive uh intellectual disabilities uh is that the sort of thing that without um charging anyone if a person wanted to call you on the phone and and talk offline for 15 or 20 minutes about the particular population they work with that you might be able to advise them on yeah that's a great point uh, okay is, uh, we want to do what's right for you we get a lot of requests from camps and schools and and adult centers in fact uh, for you know for special needs and I feel very good about how this can work um, so okay, I'm gonna put up the website so people have it maplewoodshop.com um, and I'll say it again at the end, but um, thank you, Mike, for making yourself available. Uh, it certainly, um, you know, the, the, this person also has a, um, uh, Tanya has a question about, can you show an adaptable project? And, and she and Alexandra are both asking, how much time is needed to complete projects? So um, maybe what I could do is put up the, um, the like toolbox project, uh, yeah. the tool tote. Um, and if you can talk a little bit about uh, the time of different projects, then I think it would be really fun after that to show people, um, a, you know, a clip of one of the videos. And I'll, I'll remind people again, depending on the speed of the connection that you have on your end, on your computer, uh, those of you who are joining us today, uh, you may find that the video or the audio hitches a little bit. We're, we're streaming this on a T1 line, so we're getting it out to you uh, broadband, but uh, it may bottleneck a little bit at your computer, but no problem at all because we have um, full-length samples of Mike's videos that are available on expertonlinetraining.com. So uh, let's just, let's just um, yeah, screen so let's here. Talk this. About timing and programming yeah. and projects. Yeah. So the answer is that the projects uh, vary in terms of uh, duration anywhere from a half hour to eight hours. Okay. And, and that's again, you know, with the crawl projects, uh, you know, it's very short, uh, very immediate gratification. Kids can make and take the same day. Then uh, as we start getting into say the a simple box project, again, depending on your population, um, that's generally a, a one, a, like a, a 90 minute to two hour project. So generally that's one to two sessions. Okay. There's no, like, if you're, if you have a lot of 30 minute sessions, it can work. If you mm -hmm. have 
75 minute sessions, it can work. Um, and then, uh, you know, in terms of the programming, uh, you know, as you go, we basically, what we do is we help you fill, say, 80% of your schedule. Hmm. Because uh, on A, we know that um, your mileage may vary. And B, we know that it rains. And so there's always rain days, right. different things that affect your schedule. So we believe that it's better not to try and cram and get stressed out. It's better to do the project well and with, you know, confidence and have yeah. those learning lessons. And here's the, here's the extra part is that at the end, you're going to have two things. You're going to have kids who actually know how to use the tools and you're going to have a box full of scrap wood. <laughs> And so right. what we decided, well, just out of necessity, was that we invented this, we just called scrap architecture. And the kids can basically build whatever they want out of the scrap bin, as long as they're maintaining safety. Right. And that, in fact, turns out to be the, one of the, some of the best projects because kids really get to explore their own concepts, uh -huh. how to use the tools, they're ready for it. And you walk away with, you know, less wood at the end. <laughs> So, right. um, so in other words, that if you're worried about the kids who finish early or how to keep everyone in sync, yeah, that's one way. The other way is that uh, we we encourage you to uh, deputize the kids that are having an easy time with it. Okay, and them help the other kids. Yeah, so it's empowering for everyone that peer learning and training is is a really nice technique. Yeah, you know, you and I um, met. Uh, almost by accident and discovered that we had simultaneously created these libraries of videos on woodworking with hand tools and we were uh, so clearly on the same page philosophically and I told you the story uh, which I'll retell very briefly of our having some behavior problems in the camp where I worked for 36 summers in arts and crafts and figuring out pretty quickly that you know, the uh, minor kind of stuff, you know, kids flicking, you know, uh, pieces of paper at each other or leaving the program period early. The, the boredom and the minor behavior problems we realized was really because they weren't engaged. And when we transformed our arts and crafts program to woodworking with hand tools, everything that you're describing, the uh, use of tools, the management of time, the design element, the tactile element, the visual element. And, you know, to, uh, to speak a little bit to Tanya's question, you know, kids with different abilities, whether they have uh, cognitive or visual impairment, a physical limitation, it's certainly been my experience and working some with Kurt Pedeswa at Camp for All in Texas that the same sorts of adaptations that can be made with other programs can be made with woodworking with hand tools. And because it's a hand tool, you don't have something that is spinning or moving at great speed. And that makes it much safer. And when, and, and, and sort of that slowness, I think, helps with the development of you know, all of these skills that we're talking about. So regardless of the limitation that the person might have or, you know, their different ability, they may not at all see it as a limitation. I can see that adapting some of the projects that you have and um, making it as accessible as possible. And at the same time for, let's say, neurotypical kids, uh, helping to hold their attention and diminish behavior problems um, is fantastic. Uh, so we've got um, a question about financial commitment, initial cost and tools. And what I think I'll do is let you answer that, Mike, uh, while I queue up a video. So can you talk to people who are interested in, um, in pricing, whether they want to subscribe to the videos, whether they want to purchase, um, I'll put up a Oh. Absolutely, and I just I just wanted to add one more thing. I, I just please please the, uh, physical yeah. Impairment side is that in a camp in Brooklyn, one of the uh, uh, counselors who taught the woodworking mm -hmm. uh, was born uh, with a basically without a hand. Okay, you know, a little stump of a thumb, mm -hmm. but nothing beyond the wrist. He was actually better at woodworking than the other counselor who had two hands. 
And I would watch him, you know, pin things, you know, use this honestly club of an arm mm -hmm. uh, with, with great dexterity. And yeah. So, you know, I forgot that if you, if this is the only way you've known that your left hand exists, you don't see something missing. You just work with what you got. Right, right. He was adjusting hand planes. He was adjusting coping saws that are, I mean, almost literally a three-hand operation. Yeah. He was doing it with like yeah. one and a half. And so it really uh, made me feel good about the potential here. Again, sure. nothing spinning, uh, you're in control. Now, in terms of the um, costs, so- Yes, yeah, so I have up a picture of the, um, the cabinet. Yeah, so what you're seeing on screen is, is the toolbox that has everything in it. Now, there's a range of costs, and I'm happy to you know, also speak with you all uh, individually. Um, but in broad strokes, the prices can range anywhere from, you can have access to the online training and uh, project plans. Uh, I think if you're a EOT subscriber already, it's like an increment of $200 uh, mm -hmm. on your annual subscription. If you're not an EOT subscriber, and you just want the videos, it's uh, $700. Now, in addition to that, we can offer you consulting, uh, which is priced by the hour. And then uh, we can sell you even these individual workstations by themselves. Now, if you have tools or you're trying to rehab an old shop, happy to work with you, and we've done this before. Uh, we're like the wood shop whisperer, where we'll help you make the best of what you got, and you can buy incrementally what you don't have. Now, what a lot of people do is because the thought of, you know, ramping something up is daunting, they end up renting or leasing or buying. And, the, the, um, and those prices range from anywhere from about 6000 anywhere up to 15000 for a full outright purchase. Okay. And then the tools, the coping saw blades are going to break. I can guarantee that. Beyond that, the tools are quite durable. Even those very thin, light Japanese saws, because they're pulling, it's like pulling a string, they're under tension, and I haven't had any break on me yet. Uh, we designed the uh, workstations so that when the blade hits something that's not the project, it's not a metal vise, it's wood. So you don't ruin your saws as quickly as with those old metal vices, that <laughs> yeah. have, right? And then the workstations themselves and workbenches um, are very durable. I mean, we'll guarantee them for five years, but I'm sure they'll last longer. And certain parts on them are meant to be consumed so that eventually kids will saw through certain areas and those are all replaceable. We can mail you extra parts. Oh, that's awesome. All you need is a, is a drill and you can swap them out in a couple minutes. So the toolbox as well is very durable. It's made out of high, high grade plywood made by a cabinet maker here in New Jersey. And uh, we set it up to be like, you know, furniture from a hundred years ago that was meant to go on a steamship and gets banged around a lot. So the only uh, thing I would suggest is, you know, keep it somewhere dry or pack a thing of kitty litter in there during the winter to, you know, avoid rust. Um, but otherwise very durable. Um, and the financial commitment, you know, can vary. And I guess the last thing I should say on that is we have discounts for EOT subscribers. We have um, also discounts for ACA members and we have an early bird discount. <laughs> well, that's awesome. All right, so just, you know, to review for people, um, depending on what you have um, going on in, you know, your school or camp right now, you can, uh, you can go purely instructional and have access to the videos uh, some of which come, and we'll show you in a minute, with um, uh, drawings, plans, handouts. Uh, you could uh, go in uh, for a little deeper dive with the instructional videos and uh, the Maple Woodshop curated cabinet of, of tools. And I will say, um, tool restoration is, is wonderful. And I've restored some um, like rusty block planes that I've found at garage sales. But it's time consuming and uh, my recommendation would be to benefit from Mike's careful research on which are the best tools for some of these beginning, intermediate and more advanced projects. And uh, when you purchase what Mike's curated cabinet has put together, not only can you take down a whole wood shop in whatever space you've got, uh, could, you know, could be the, um, 
could be the dining hall or the uh, cafeteria at your camp or school because you just need a table. But um, it's going to be peace of mind that those tools are like all in good shape and you've got someone that you can call if you've got a question about replacements and things like that. Um, some people who are tuning in are uh, experienced woodworkers and uh, may have a wonderfully curated collection at their school or camp already. And uh, in that case, you know, the on-site instruction and consultation that Mike and his team offer, uh, which again, is an additional financial commitment, um, puts you at another level. And if you're gonna get serious about endowing some of your staff with the skills they need to teach other staff and to really keep the program alive, that may be where you go with it. Yeah, so can I just um, thank you for that? Yeah, please uh, go ahead and then I'll, um, I'll show people some videos. Yeah, um, I just wanted to go backwards for a sec and talk about how this all came about and why why these things and um so you know it's it, before the pot uh before we started uh chris had talked about how powerful it is that when you do something that plays on your strength and especially your strengths in the service of others and i realized that that is uh is is true for me like i uh have a very uh, service mentality you know my whole life i, I feel like i exist to help others solve problems mm. And so whether it was being a tour guide, which was my first uh, gig out of college, or uh, helping people figure out the internet back in the, way back in the 90s, <laughs> you know, yeah. realizing that I had this deep desire to mentor uh, kids. And I also really had a passion for woodworking. And so four years ago, there was a maker fair in town called Maker Madness. And a friend who knew I loved woodworking said, will you run a table for us? I said, I'd love to run a table. And I invented this project where kids made a little footstool using only hand tools. That's not true. We used a power drill as well. And uh, I realized how much the kids loved it. And I realized how much I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Growing in my career, I was like a vice yeah. president at a public company. It was a very good career. I just was not happy at all. And so I had that mid 40s, late 40s realization that, you know what? I, I want to do something that has more meaning. So two years ago, two and a half years ago, I, I left my corporate job. And again, at that same maker fair, I founded Maple Woodshop. And I started by teaching locally. And this is real bootstrap. Like my first location was in a, a daycare center. Because <laughs> after 3 p.m., the kids go home and they have this empty room. And yeah, so great. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Tables yeah. that actually telescoped from toddler height up to adult height. And I would schlep in the tools and boxes and crates. And a lot of them were restored antique tools. And to kind of shorten the story, I went through several iterations of that and spent a lot of time hauling things. And I met a teacher who said, I love what you're doing here. I wish I could do this in my classroom. And that's when I had, I put together a lot of different things of trying different ways of holding wood and seeing injuries and trying to prevent injuries. And that's where I came up with these portable woodworking uh, benches. Well, so that, that's a great segue to, um, just before we show the video, um, what are the costs that people can expect for wood? Um, and, um, and maybe, I think you talked about how often tools need to be replaced, except for the coping saw blades. Um, the answer is probably never um, or very infrequently, but people are asking, how many folks, how many uh, sure. kids, so, students can work with what you provide in the cabinet? So that's one question. And then the other is, where do you get wood? Absolutely, so thank you. So um, I'll answer those both uh, in the context of this uh, you know, progression, which was that you know, we designed, then we designed it for a classroom. And so we figured you know, 16 was a good number because it was kind of as many kids as you could fit in a room. Mm -hmm. and then okay. last year we had a request from Asphalt Green and they wanted 24 kids at a time. So we made a wider tool chest that could accommodate 24 kids at a time. Still fit through a doorway. Yep. Um, and then, uh, to, you know, as I was teaching locally, I realized that if I could train others to teach this and have a very, you know, uniform solution, uh, we could really help kids all over the country. And so one of the things we did was standardize around materials. And we generally use one by six pine, 
three D nails and number eight screws. So very simple to source, pretty cheap. So specifically, how much? Again, it depends on the project. Some projects might only be, you know, forty cents uh, per kid. Other projects might be six dollars. Um, it kind of depends on the hardware. Like anything with an oak dowel gets more expensive. Right. A lot of things, you know, there's five, six dollars worth of hardware on each one. But right. it also takes, you know, a good eight to ten hours. So I think like a, a rule of thumb could be about fifty cents per hour per kid for material. Fifty cents per hour per kid. Okay. Yeah, that's, that that's pretty inexpensive. Do the yeah. math on your programming. Now, some things uh, are free, like the scrap architecture. It's going to cost you glue and nails, which are right. whatever. So we try to make it, uh, we also provide you a spreadsheet. So you plug in the number of kids that are doing project, and it'll spit back, here's what you need to get from the lumber yard. Mm, that's great. And I, it, it's worth mentioning, too, that if um, people have a, a maintenance department or facilities management or grounds uh, department in their camp or school, um, you, you can ask whether they have the time and the tools to take things that are free, like um, wooden pallets that can be, uh, you know, broken down, take the nails out, run them through a thickness planer, um, and you've got some strapping that you can use for a project. In fact, uh, you know, the sky's the limit here in terms of people's imagination, but you can go onto a website like Pinterest and look at projects using um, wooden pallets and um, people have done amazing things. Um, you could get sure. any of the projects that Mike has uh, instead of using uh, you know clear pine boards that you get at a big box home store you know you could you know you want to make that out of zebra wood go for it um, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna look different will. it's gonna be a little bit more expensive but yeah. but the saws um, will cut, um, <laughs> cut any wood like I've I, you know I've used them on maple and oak yeah, I'm testing a project now with uh, someone who, who has a, anyway, I'm testing a project now uh, and he's cutting two by fours and not yeah. sideways, but he's ripping them. He's like, ripping them, yeah. Lengthwise mm -hmm. with the same saw and it's a workout. Yeah. Uh, it's, they're really like shockingly versatile. Yeah. Uh, so that and a hand plane, you know, the basic tool set is uh, you've got a, a, a saw for cutting straight cuts a saw for cutting curves, which is yep. a saw. You got these hammers, which are actually pretty small. They're meant for you know small hands, um, but they are very effective. Mm -hmm. uh, a block plane for shaping, a rasp, screwdriver, um, for anyone who wants. And then there's a bunch of uh, like measuring and marking tools. Well, so let's show people um, a video, and um, we'll bring people on now. Uh, folks who are taking a look at the uh, expert online training website, this is after logging in. And, uh, you know, on, on expert online training, uh, I promise you won't have to have my picture, um, which is here. You can put up your camp or school's seal, motto, logo, or your picture, or um, you can um, put up a you know, your cat, whatever you want and customize it. But um, I've customized this for me and my seal and so forth. But you can see that I've subscribed to some different libraries here. Uh, Leadership Essentials is our kind of flagship library. And the content that we have um, here in Leadership Essentials covers what most schools and camps want to do to train their staff in mental health and behavior, supervision, youth development, um, uh, physical and emotional safety and supervision. Um, if I scroll down here to Maple Woodshop and click on view content right there, uh, now you can take a look at what Mike has available in the Maple Woodshop library. And you can see here divided into uh, three categories, shop safety, tool use, and projects. Uh, so let's take a look at one of the project videos. Is there one that uh, you'd like us to watch a minute of so people can get a, a taste of? Sure, let's try the last one, the making a tool tote. All right, fantastic. Um, so we're gonna take a look at this folks and I will uh, skip ahead to wherever Mike thinks would be interesting uh, sections for us to take a look at. And then um, when we come back, we'll look at the resource that is available for that video. And I will remind everyone who's joining us for this webinar, the speed of the connection that you have on the receiving end may cause the video to hitch 
but um, that's because we're trying to do two things at once here, run the webinar and simultaneously stream video. But we want to remind everybody that by, by calling expert online training or by calling Maple Woodshop, uh, we can get you set up with uh, a demo account so that without worrying about hitching, uh, you can preview this content and decide whether it's right for you. So we'll take a look here at an intermediate video making a tool tote. The Tool Tote project is a great capstone project for woodworkers because it incorporates almost every tool in the tool chest and allows woodworkers to work through many different design challenges as well as construction challenges. Construction-wise, there's two versions. There's a simple version, which is conceptually similar to the keepsake box, and there's a more advanced version, which requires woodworkers to cut 16-inch pieces, three of them, one bottom and two sides, exactly the same length. And it forces the woodworkers to square up the ends and is a nice challenge for the more advanced woodworkers. To start, we measure two 17 and a half inch long pieces of wood. We start by making a mark at 17 and a half inches, making our V shape so we have accuracy, then using the combination square with our grip. So you see I'm making reference to skills they've learned in other videos. Yeah, that's great. I'm just noticing that. And I like the, um, you, know, you do wonderful so cutaways that are close-ups. Side. So you can see how effective those saws are. Right? 17 and a half on this board, keep it straight. Put your initials on the end so that you can stack up the projects while they're in progress. So that's then, to save space when you have the first board. You know, during the summer, I have 70 kids at once and I need to store all their projects. So that came out of uh, you know necessity where yeah, reduce clutter, you have them write it on the end. I try to borrow from Ikea is <laughs> that you know know how to deal with volume yeah no that's cool all right I'm gonna I'm gonna bring us to the middle of the project here so we can take a peek at um, what happens a little bit later with the coping saw well, this the, the director's cut yes so here I just want to point out uh, we teach kids to use two hands on the on the saw yeah, I noticed that. Let me see if I can just move us back a little bit so people can. I may uh, explain that, but I may yeah. not in this video. Uh, yeah. I do when we, when we, we have a video on every single tool. So mm -hmm. uh, in the coping cell, we make a big deal out of crossing your thumbs because if you do that, you don't have one hand holding the wood and, and then you cut it because it's behind the wood. You can't see right. it. So we've yeah, no, that's, we can, I think we can see there um, that your thumbs are crossed and certainly the two-handed grip is a nice safety, safety feature. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let's watch for another uh, 30 seconds here. Please see the video on coping saws to get more of an instruction on how to use these. The point of this exercise is for them to understand how to keep the coping saw flat and how to follow a line. So you're following a line that is on the other side of the wood that you can see. Right. Important yeah. For you to have all the woodworkers wearing glasses at all times, and especially at this time, because having worked with hundreds of young woodworkers, they tend to hurry the last step, and these small pieces can go flying off. <laughs> the one exception to the rule of never holding your the wood is if both hands are behind the cutting edge, it can be nice to hold on to these little pieces of wood. There. Now that we've proven we know how to use the coping saw, we can actually cut the line we want. So we're going to start up here. All right. Mike, I'm going to fast forward to near the end here so people can see uh, what that looks like so uh, when we get all close. Different, you know, whether it's safety or empowerment, we build in a lot of good old fashioned woodworking. Like yeah, I, that's I, awesome. I have woodworking books all around the house and I'm always 
reading up on like, like the best tips for learning like traditional woodworking. That's so really cool. We figured out was don't have kids make their first cut using a tool when it's a critical cut. So that's why yes. introductory projects or even if they uh, are, are getting a refresher, we have them do a test cut. So what you saw there was me cutting out a little piece uh, of something that'll be cut out further. And yes. so it was using scrap while it was still on the board. Um, and it takes away a lot of the anxiety that they're going to mess up. Yeah, that's smart. It's really smart. Um, so I want to show people the handout in a second, but no, we're good. hoping that people notice that everything happens there on the workbench that you made. Hammer together. If we goof, we goof. We learn. We adjust. We fix. Ta-da! There you go, warts and all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, so um, I'm going to go back here for people to see. Uh, once again, on the Expert Online Training website, uh, if we click on projects here and, and look at Mike's library of videos, ever-growing library of videos, uh, we can also click on you know download resource here, and we'll get the um, PDF plans that go along with the tool tote. I love this one. Um, so this is where I have to interject uh, the creativity of, of you know, kids to um, come up with their own designs is fantastic. I, I quickly learned that there's a limit to how prescriptive you can be in, make, in making projects where, you know, there's 8, 10, 12, 20 different kids. Everybody's going to make it slightly different. And I love the fact that Woodworking with hand tools is one of those things where um, people can really exercise creativity. It's it's completely different. People should really understand this from kit-based arts and crafts, where it's all snapped together, glued together, pre-measured, uh, pre-drawn. This is a completely different animal. So if, if if anyone's watching and thinking, oh, you know, I don't I don't know that the our our campers or our students were ever that excited about building you know bird houses uh ask yourself was it kit based and if the answer is yes um then you don't have any <laughs> you don't have any data uh to indicate um anything but go with woodworking with hand tools because they were nonplussed and um perhaps bored because it didn't really require any creative thinking so you've got here um on this handout, uh, class planning, the time people were asking about, uh, you know, vocabulary, what tools you need, um, and order of operations, which is just fantastic. F uh, you know, photos that go along with this. Uh, it's just amazing, amazing stuff. Like so people can really, uh, from beginner to advanced, um, with, with the combination of videos and handouts, they have exactly what they need. Thank you. Yeah, and all the handouts. Now what we've done is we've taken all the handouts and created like an essential companion guide that lives in the tool chest. Oh, fantastic. All right, so people, if people buy the tool chest, it comes with that guide. It comes with the guide, so it has all the project plans, but it has uh, some of the shop safety. It has yep. uh, some of the tools uh, so that if, uh, you know, a kid hands your instructor a block plane and said, I broke it. The instructor said, no, it's fine. It just came apart. Here, let's fix it together. And, you know, you're back in business. And that's part of the training we do as well. Yeah. You know, some of the training they can do on their own and some of the training we can do with them to help them through those things. So we have this mix of remote, um, live, um, you know, solo. We're, and then, um, and so, you know, my last job before this, I worked at an online learning company. And, you know, what we found was that this blended learning approach where it's, you know, live and also they can absorb at their own rate. Yeah. Successful. And what we're going to introduce for the spring is that we appreciate that, um, you know, a lot of staff are young. They might not have the most discipline to do homework before they get to camp. Right. So uh, when it comes to the safety, we're going to start spoon feeding, you know, sending a video or two each week 
leading up to right, right. June so that they get these kind of constant reminders and we can you know, track their progress because we, uh, we want to make sure that they're uh, ready. It's worked out fine, but we yeah. think we're always looking at ways we can improve. No, that's awesome. And I, you know, before we uh, wrap up here, we just have a few minutes left. I'll point out that some of the tool use and chop safety videos not only have handouts, but they also have quizzes. So, you know, a quiz on how to use a block plane, a quiz on how to use a pull saw. Can I just tell you why I love um, this collection of videos is you've got like how to use a hammer. And honestly, um, I think if you brought your staff together on site, then you were using a different way of teaching instead of self-paced online pre-arrival courses you said anyone who's going to do woodworking please meet down at the wood shop or the arts and crafts building and you gathered your staff in person you know on site and said all right uh is there anyone is there anyone who doesn't know how to use a hammer and just like needs a refresher silence right they're not going to say anything because they're embarrassed um when you get to do self-paced online learning, you'd be like, you know what? I think I should watch the hammer video. I really think I should, you know, it's, it's, it's so much more accessible. And for safety, those of you who are owners and directors, being able to see that your staff, you know, pass the quiz on safe programs or room setup and safety, I think is uh, just a fantastic um, way to document understanding. Um, and you're gonna need that for accreditation. Uh, you know, God forbid, defending yourself from a lawsuit. But look, you want documentation of of, of key aspects of staff training. And Mike, I'll, uh, I'll let you close us out here in a second, but I'll point out too, to current expert online training subscribers, a subscription to the Maple Woodshop video library is, uh, you know, like a third of the price, um, just a couple hundred bucks. And um, it would, you know, I think you also offered uh, discounts to uh, the cabinet or your on-site training. So we, we're we're hoping that you know the partnership of using expert online training as the learning management system for Maple Woodshop is something that um, you know people really take advantage of. Uh, and if you're already an expert online training subscriber, so you have the Leadership Essentials Library. Um, I'll point out that in the youth development and play category um, there are additional um, projects that are related to woodworking and um, these uh, are videos that I hosted um, and like Mike try to have quizzes for the things that have to do with with safety and um, you'll discover that um, these these two things so nicely complement one another and to take your woodworking, program or transform your arts and crafts program to something that is actually going to have kids excited and engaged and returning for future summers because they had so much fun i would encourage everyone to visit maplewoodshop.com and check out what mike has to offer um mike i'll let you as i said um close it out and i while you're doing that i'm gonna take a look and see if there are um, any other questions from folks. But uh, what do you feel are the key takeaways and what are the next steps if people wanna learn more? Sure, thank you. So again, thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to, to work with Expert Online Training. Yeah. Uh, I think you know, the takeaway is that um, what we have is you know, the pendulum swinging back towards low tech, uh, you know, highly tactile activities. And, you know, woodworking at camp is the most natural thing ever. And, you know, I don't want to take credit. We, all we've done is make it portable and make it, you know, easy to implement. So, you know, it's empowering, you know, it's engaging. And we are trying to solve for the ease of implementation so that we can help more kids, um, your kids, uh, get this really powerful experience. And um, what's interesting is that as the program grows, we're seeing this in New Jersey, we have kids you know, going from location to location. And so there's this sort of effect where uh, they can, it's transferable. You know? yes. They did it at camp and now they're doing it at school or vice versa, or they're able to go to the library. 
and so you're part of something that's even bigger and um and it you know we found you know camps also want to do it because it differentiates um and we want to help you do that as well so um yeah uh for that's awesome groups, please um uh, go to maplewoodshop.com. We've got a, a really great camps page. We've got a video that shows how camps have done this last summer, um, how they handle training and implementation. And uh, yeah, reach out to us. We're here for you. We'll get back to you right away and uh, hope we can work together next summer. Last point is that um, we will be at ACA uh, Tri-State uh, for sure. Great. And uh, possibly national and Northeast, but um, we hope we can meet you in person as well. Kick the tires. Thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, on behalf of the entire expert online training team, I thank you, Mike, for giving us a deep dive into this phenomenal Maple Woodshop program that you've created. Um, I love the fact that there are different entry points based on people's budget and interest and existing programs. Once again, you can contact Mike Schlaff through his website, maplewoodshop.com, and on expertonlinetraining.com, you can watch sample videos of both the Maple Woodshop Library, the Leadership Essentials Library, and our expanding uh, offerings in terms of content. So I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend, uh, including you, Mike, and I will uh, look forward to seeing you all on the next Expert Online Training webinar. So take care, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Chris.